Welcome back, everyone, to episode 35 of the Mind Up Business Podcast presented by Bennett Creative Media. I'm your host, Easton Bennett. And with us today, we don't have one, but two guests, Lisa Myers and Derek Unjum. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you? I am fantastic. It's been a long day, but we're here filming another podcast. So like always, we're going to get right into it. What do you guys do for someone that has no idea, you know, if they saw you on the street and you're like, what do you guys do? What would you tell them? We are co-owners of the barn at 52 Pines. And for those of you that have not been out to the barn yet, we are one of the newer event venues in the mine at Burlington area. We're located just outside of mine at just before Burlington. So the barn at 52 Pines, for the people that don't know, it is a wedding venue, obviously, and then other events, correct? Yes. yes. We oh. focus on wedding and event venue. I mean, focusing on weddings, like I had mentioned, but really okay. open for events of all types. So space from whether it's 10 people up to 400 people, events of any type. Okay. So then the ideation process, let's start from the very beginning. What did that look like? You know, when did you guys kind of come together and decide this is a business we want to try to operate? Boy, that was probably what, 2017? Yeah. Um, she came to work for me in 2017 and you had had a cousin's wedding I think in Minnesota. Okay. And she came back and brought up the idea of buying an old barn, fixing it up, turning it into a wedding venue. Okay. And I honestly thought she was crazy. Yep. Um, I've done construction for a number of years and I guess we kind of just almost dismissed it. You know, it was more of a joke, Yeah. but you know, the more we kind of kept talking about it and hearing the need for something like that in the minor area. Okay. Um, I guess we kind of sat down and started looking at it from a serious, you know, side of things. Put the numbers to it to see if it would mm-hmm. work. So and it started with her. She brought the idea. It, it started dream, with her. <laughs> a wish list. And like he said, I started working for his construction company. And maybe it was a little bit in my head. I was worried of what if you stop building houses? Now I have to go back and find a different job. So I'm maybe okay. thinking like, what could we else could we do other than just build houses? So yeah. we brought up this idea, um, went to college for hospitality and tourism. So I always kind of had like the wedding industry in mind, but never okay. went that route. And then, like I said, just kind of kept bringing it up. And he's like, all right, maybe mine does need something like this. Let's see what can come of it. Let's do some research and start there. So where did it come from you then? Did you always have the idea? Or what what was that turning point, that spark in your head? Like, let's just buy a barn. (laughs) I think just... I mean, everybody loves fixer upper shows, right? And oh, I yeah. think working I used to for a binge cinch- HGTV. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So that it always sounds fun, right? Yeah. But for me, I didn't have the background, knowledge, construction, that sort of thing. And maybe that's where having Derek or working for Derek's construction company and being a sister in law, we've known each other for many years. So knowing that was his industry and he was good at those sort of things maybe saw that up op- as the opportunity of like, Hey, what, what if we did something like this? Is this an option? Okay. Like he had mentioned, talked about buying an old farmstead or an older barn to kind of fix it up. Mm-hmm. But then the wheels start turning and you really do the research and it's like, okay, is it better to start from scratch? Is it better to start or your- purchase something that's already okay. Yeah. I wanted to build from scratch. Okay. That was, and is that it was my scratch? excitement. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Was yeah, it we, always a barn idea or were there other concepts like let's not yeah, I think do it was always a barn idea from the day always from day one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, that was, that was the exciting part for me. Um, you know, building houses for years and years and years. I mean, it kind of gets boring yeah. after a while. Well, it's the same thing, right? It is the same okay. thing. So building a barn, um, it was a totally new project. That was my adrenaline rush. Okay. And so that's kind of how we, once we decided, okay, let's do it. Let's put the numbers to it. And then we had to start finding a piece of land. Okay. And as far as the design goes, I mean, it pretty much was just her and I looking at different things online, penciling things out on a napkin. Okay. That's kind of how it started. Pinterest? Did you go on Pinterest a lot? Lots we of We did. Pinterest. Yes. And Derek did the research on maybe the business side of things of people that have done it before. So okay. reached out to other people throughout the country. To see if it would make sense. Yeah. We ended up working with DC builders out of Portland. Okay. And they were fantastic to work with. But I guess the biggest thing is they had a really big portfolio of different projects they had done. Mm -hmm. So we kind of looked through all of them, combine pictures, visions that we had thought of what we felt out of their portfolio. Yes. So in combination with what we've kind of sketched out, what our dream was with what they'd had. And we're like, okay, we like this from this building or this from this building and working with our designers, um, you know, just kind of piece together what we felt wanted for the business. So then did they, 
assist you in building it or were they more of the design team or they designed and provided the material. Okay. So like all the, the wood beams and posts and everything yep. like that. So they provided all the material. They were the architects. Gotcha. So then you, and then you and your crew just went after it. Correct. I general contracted it okay. with local subs. That's exciting, build it. man. Yep. Was it as exciting? So I know you mentioned you, it was different from building houses. Was yes. it as exciting as you thought it was going to be? Yes. Okay. It was. Well, that's good then. Cause there's, and that's, what's unique about it. It's not just the barn. You have the, uh, what's the name for where the brides get ready? The bridal suite. Bridal suite. Bridal suite. Okay. So you have that too, which is yes. kind of cool. Yep. And it is, was really fun just seeing, I mean, like I said, if you've been in the barn, um, seeing the beams and the structures, how large they are, you don't yeah. really realize it. Like I was so excited the day we saw that truck turn off the highway with all of our building materials on it. Yeah. You know, just something so different than building houses and watching them put the beams up. Um, was quite an undertaking. So what did the building process look like? How long did that take then? So we started moving dirt in uh, fall of 2018. Okay. And we got a little bit of concrete poured, but winter come relatively early that year, shut us down. Yep. So we started in the spring of 19 and we already had our first event booked for October of 19. Without it being built. Without it being built. Okay. Not just a couple, just a couple of mock-ups. So yeah. we, uh, we got started, I think in late April, um, on the bridal suite and had to let all the snow and frost yeah. come out of the ground. Yeah. But it was, it was a busy summer. I mean, we didn't really get going on the main barn, um, framing wise, I think first week of June. Okay. And we were complete by the second, second, third week of October. October About 18th. two days before our first event is when we <laughs> like, officially wrapped yes. everything up. The yeah. last screw went in. Okay. Yes. So not recommended, you said. You know, maybe not. It was a tight timeline. timeline. He works well <laughs> under pressure. Yep. Um, and we were very hands on as owners out there. So we did a lot of the work ourselves. Plus we had, like you said, a lot of fantastic local um, subcontractors that worked out there. So we give yep. all of them so much credit for getting us up and running on time. A little stressful though. You know, it, at times there's some pressure there, <laughs> but you know, it was exciting and it made that first event so much more rewarding. Okay. Like, you know, just standing there and seeing it all come together was yeah, pretty cool. So then you guys are in-laws. When did you know, was it just kind of a perfect fit to go into business together? You kind of had the idea. He kind of had the construction side or were there any times when you're like, man, maybe we shouldn't go into business with family. Cause I know that's one thing people talk about a Correct. lot. Yep. Yep. No, I mean, really. And we knew each other for quite a few years before she came to work. Um, so it's not like we were kind of going into business as strangers. Yeah. Um, we'd hung out a lot. You know, we've been good friends since she, you know, joined the family. And uh, yeah, I, there was never really a time. I mean, we seem like we're usually on the same page. Okay. Don't get me wrong. She's got ideas that I think are crazy <laughs> and vice versa. That happens. Yeah. But for the most part, um, you know, the chemistry works good. Okay. Because there's definitely, you know, going into business with somebody. Uh, as a partnership is, it's a, yeah. it's an undertaking, you know, I mean, cause it can, yeah. it can blow up. And I think it was just, obviously, like he mentioned, knew them for a while before um, coming into the family, started working for his construction company. So I knew his work ethic. Obviously okay. he knew my work ethic. And I think going into a partnership, you really have to ha be on the same page that way where you're not feeling like maybe you know, she's not putting in the time or I'm not putting in the time or things yeah. like that. We were on the same page that way. So that really helped. Um, and I think just the end result or the end goal, even if like he said, sometimes maybe I have a crazy idea or he has a crazy idea and we have a different way of getting there. The end result is always. Yeah. It's a good balance. Well, and it helps that your skills complement each other. Yeah. Yep. You can be just over here in the clouds and then he can be down here in mm -hmm. the dirt and then you just mash right in the middle. Yes. So then the name Barn of 52 Pines, how did that come about? Were there other names in the hat that you guys were deciding between or did you, what was the ideation process for the business name? Yeah, I guess long story short is while we were looking for a piece of land, we found a piece on Highway 52, kind of between uh, Minot and Sawyer. Okay. And that was a piece that we were confident we were going to get. And so we started coming up with names Yeah, and there was a handful of different names. I can't yeah. even remember the other ones, but we settled on the barn at 52 pines. Cause this piece of property had lots of pine trees on it. Okay. It was on highway 52. Yep. Ultimately um, that fell through. So we went back to the drawing board trying to find the right piece of land. And so we found the right piece and that's where we ended up building. And but you just said, we're going to stick with the name. We, we struggled. Cause we tried coming up with different names, but okay. we kept coming back to the barn at 52 pines. So at the end of the day, 
I said, well, let's let's plant 52 pine trees okay. winding the driveway up to the barn yep. and we'll keep the name. So did you guys do that then? We, we did. did. That's yes. pretty sweet then. Yep. I didn't know yep. that. Because there are no trees on the property, I suppose, when you got there or what? No pine trees. No pine trees. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Our family did not like us that July, <laughs> hot July afternoon when we were planting 52 pine trees, but. They're all like eight footers, yes. eight, nine foot trees. Okay. So big, yes. big trees. But. And you made them come out and help, obviously. Yes. Yes. Well, hey, that's what you got to get your beer that's what buddies. That's family's for. Yeah. yeah you got to get your beer buddies. <laughs> that's Everyone, right. That's what family's yes. for. Exactly. Yep. They have no choice. They have to come. Right. 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 Yep. Uh, so. Have you always both been business minded? Obviously, you have the construction side of things. Did you always know you wanted to start a business, Lisa? My answer would be completely different than his. For me, no. Okay. Um, I've not usually been the one growing up, never really thought of having my own business. I guess I've always been more of a follower versus a leader. Okay. So I've just never thought I'd have the capability to be a business owner. You yeah. know, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, it's not as easy as some people make it seem. So yep. No, I never was that route um, as I was always just going to work for someone else. Okay. But I guess that just kind of came about as we naturally moved forward. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So, and then you, the, I assume you were, I mean, you had your, your contracting business. So this was yep. not super new for you. Correct. Yeah. I started my first business in 2004. Okay. So, and I had started uh, a few other businesses in between as well. Mm -hmm. So this was, this was a, it wasn't a huge undertaking as far as the business side of it went. Yeah. I was not worried about the business side of it as much as I was. I didn't figure I'd ever be in the wedding industry. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. going from construction and real estate and some of the other projects or adventures that I've been on. Yeah. Um, You're like now I got being in the dresses. wedding industry was was not what I was. So but that's where once again. Yeah. We compliment each other because mm -hmm. that's that's her cup of tea. So now that you are a business owner, is it what you thought it would be? Like there's obviously, you know, you have the fruits of your labor, you get to have a little bit more freedom. Mm -hmm. What is it like being a business owner? Maybe you guys can take turns answering. You might have different ideas on what you like and don't like. Sure. Yeah. I guess for me, is it what I thought hard to answer that specifically just because you always have so many ideas of what being a business owner is. I think the biggest takeaway of maybe it's better than I even thought on like the rewarding side of things yeah. just because we do have so much like sweat equity into the building and we're there for pretty much every single event mm -hmm. that we truly see what happens at all times. And for us, like we'd mentioned at the beginning, it's we're primarily weddings and receptions. So okay. that is one of the biggest days of someone's life, right? So oh, they yeah. come in and just seeing how appreciative they are and how much they love your business and your venue and how, the feedback that we get it's super rewarding as the business owner side of things. Like you can really take pride in that. But yeah, I mean, it also, I came from what was a nine to five or eight to five Monday through Friday job. So you think, okay, business owner is going to give me a lot more flexibility, right? And yep. it does, don't get me wrong, but you're also really working 24 hours a day. I mean, yeah. at all times of the day. So I don't think people realize that when you go into business, it's not like yeah, there's some benefits to it. You can maybe take vacations more yes. liberally, mm -hmm. but there are times when you're nine o'clock at night, you're like, Oh God, what am I doing? I okay. wish I had a, I wish I had a nine to five at this point. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys agree? Is that oh, absolutely. come up? The stress, yeah. you just worry about things so much more when it's yeah. your own for sure. Rather than yeah. working. For I wouldn't trade else. it for anything. Yeah. You know, go, I'd never go back to work for anyone else, but yeah, it's not, you know, it's not just, Oh, they own their own business and they have all the flexibility in the world and don't have yeah. to worry about, I mean, Truth be told is you have a lot more headaches as a business owner. And sometimes you're working you more do. than 40 hours a week. If yes. it's, you know, if it's a week yeah. where it's like, okay, we got two events and now we got to do all this shit leading up to it this week. It's right. like, okay, now you're in for 80 yep. hours and people are like, oh, you are this glamorous business yeah. owner. It's like, oh yeah, but I want to rip the hair out of my head. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. yeah. Uh, they only see the vacation side of things. They don't yeah. see the 80, 90 hour weeks. Oh, that, Derek's that in Mexico yeah. again. It's like, what the <laughs> hell? Uh, so how do you guys, how are you ensuring that the Barn of 52 Pines is different, you know, unique compared to other locations? Because you can go and have a wedding reception elsewhere, but what makes this different? How are you guys making it different? Yeah. To answer that, I guess just play off the feedback that we've gotten from people, because obviously that's what we wanted creating the business is something different than the area has, yeah. but not knowing how people are going to gravitate to it or catch on to it or, you know, like it, things like that. But I guess what we've heard is we're really that one-stop shop where you'd mentioned earlier, we do have the bridal suite on property. So we have the main barn, 
that includes obviously your reception space, ceremony space for our colder months, bridal suite for, you know, part of the crew getting ready. We do have a loft area with a groom suite upstairs for, you know, another side of the party to get be getting ready. Um, during our summer months, they can get married on property outside. Mm-hmm. Winter months, they can get married inside, catering right on site, you know, liquor license so we can have drinks during the receptions, things like that, if that's important to people. Um, so yeah, just really they're coming there. They're not having to spread their wedding party. Let's do pictures here. Then let's do this there and that sort of They'll thing. At this hotel, the reception yeah. is over here. Then they get yep. ready here. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Liquor license. then that's interesting. Is that through... It's Why not? Or so we're Surrey city of Burlington. Or, oh, Burlington. Or not Surrey. Uh, Burlington. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Because those are hard to come by, aren't they? Correct. That's what I've heard. I've, I've never tried to acquire one. I played a part in our location. Okay. When we were looking for the, yeah. the well, right piece of I land. I suppose, yeah. Because those are all pieces of the puzzle that need to fit. Yeah. I guess I didn't even think about that. So was that a <laughs> logistics thing where, when did that come up in your conversation of let's start the business? Early? That was probably pretty early on. Okay. Once think, we started yeah. looking for the right location, you know, yeah. like what... What city limits do we want to be in? Okay. You know, that type of thing. So yeah. then did the same thing happen when you had the the original space that fell through? Would that have been outside of mine as well? Correct. Okay. Gotcha. See, those are things I probably wouldn't think about. Yeah. It was I'm, those items of what are the non-negotiables? What do we have that people expect you to have as a wedding venue? Yeah. And I know I keep saying wedding venue, really any event type space. If you're Mm -hmm. having an event, what do people expect you to have there? So in order to fall into that perfect location, we needed to make sure that we could obtain A, B, C, and D. Yeah. You, yeah, you didn't want to be serving Roy Rogers and Shirley Temples for every wedding (laughs) that was out there. So what did the actual logistics of the build out look like now? So this is maybe more of a question for you. As far as... Just the, all of it. I'm just kind of curious the, the, the as to how to that finish. how that went down. Yeah. Well, I guess I mean we knew before we even found the right piece of land that we were doing the project. Okay. Um, once we had sat down, kind of penciled everything out, we knew we were doing it. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we started working with DC builders in Portland. We started the design process as well as the ordering process of material before we had the land. Okay. So we so were kind of, it was coming no matter where it was coming, was no matter what, it's just, we had to find okay. the right piece of land. It's going to be in my backyard so, if we don't find a exactly. piece of land. So, uh, and that's kind of how it started. So once we knew that, I mean, we were all in at okay. that point, there was, there was no, there was no backing out. We were doing this, um, you know, from there, it was finding the right piece of land, uh, you know, securing the remaining financing to get the project done Okay. and just working out all the little details. So then my follow-up question would be, were there any nightmare stories or fun stories about the build out process where, you know, I don't know if things went south or challenges you had to overcome. Um, I guess not it went really pretty that, smooth. Everything went pretty smooth. And I guess I don't get too worked up yeah. about things or I don't get too stressed out. So to me, I mean, she might say, yeah, there was definitely some times where yeah. it was very stressful for me. It was just, you know, we knew what needed to be done. You're like, I oh, will get it done. She booked the first wedding in October, so I knew when it had to be done by, and it just, it needed to go. And and so once we yeah. got going, it was just, yeah, you just did what you needed to do. And Okay. And I think that kind of comes back to what we talked about earlier, complimenting each other fairly well, is he does work well under pressure. I like to have little things more organized and like yep. be able to look ahead, like, hey, we actually are going to finish this on time type thing. But knowing... Again, we put so much of our own work into it. We were going to get it done one way or another, whether it was, I mean, we were out there all day, all night, you know, leading up to it. So we were going to get it done one way or another. But I think maybe I was a little bit more stressed through the process just because I'm a perfectionist in some ways where I wanted everything to be 100% perfect and done that very first event. And I mean, he's hooking up water lines a week before and it's snowing outside. And, (laughs) you know, a month earlier we had torrential downpours where we couldn't do anything outside. So things like that were maybe a little stressful. You know, you're looking outside and like there's just rain running. It's not going to get done. But you just take it day by day and not. When you look back at the pictures. Oh, it's. You know, I mean, because it's kind of all a blur, right? Like those last couple months working hundred hour weeks. I mean, I don't even hardly remember most of it, but when you go back and look at the pictures and you look at what the inside of the place looked like a week before the first wedding, yep, I can see why people that stop by 
kept saying, there's no way you guys are going to be done. Like that event is going to have to get moved. uh, Our first couples were fantastic and so patient and we'll never forget them just because they kept always checking in. And there was a few that were like, do you need help with anything? And we're like, no, just relax. We got this. (laughs) We still have our wedding there. (laughs) What else is going out there? Uh, So do you guys remember that first event that you had then looking back at it? What was it like? Because you've obviously changed from that first event Mm -hmm. to now what you guys are doing today. What did that first event look like? It was fantastic. I mean, it was. I don't think we had slept in probably four days leading okay. up to that yeah. first event. But was it? Yeah. Ner- were you guys a little nervous? I like was the day of? Nervous. I was just because, and it was one of our bigger events. There was a lot of people coming in, yeah. and it was indoor ceremony because again, it was mm-hmm. we didn't have our outdoor space done. So our indoor ceremonies take a little bit more work or logistics behind it because chairs are set up for guests to sit in, yeah. and then afterwards we transition the tables, the tables. into place. So it was, we'd never done it before, but I mean, for not it having, went it went really well. Mm-hmm. And yes, we've changed a few things here and there and grown from that event, but the basis or the groundwork, I mean, I think we relatively the same. same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's what I was going to ask. What's the learning curve like for, you know, hosting those first few events, mm-hmm. you know, from after the first one events, two through five were the mm-hmm. things that this mic is just ass. Uh, <laughs> After that, you know, the events two through five were there learning curves where things that you had to implement where it's like, okay, maybe this will make things run a bit more efficiently. Yeah, we definitely changed some things logistically. I mean, nothing major. Like I said, I think we had a pretty good system going in. But once again, we'd never done this before. Yeah. You know, this was all new to us. So mm-hmm. um, the system that we had, it worked, but there's always changes. There's always ways to be better. Yeah. You know, so we changed things and we're still changing things. I yeah. mean, we've been open for over three years now. And I think, you know, from time to time we're like, Hey, this would work better. Okay. Things would go a little bit more smooth. And, and I think we'll continue to, you know, make improvements and make changes moving forward. Yeah. Cause I think what we've seen too, is you may have that perfect plan on -hmm. paper, but when there's 350 people in the building and they do their own thing, like you just work around them and you come up with, okay, this is going to work better this time or next time than it did this time because of you know, okay. X, Y, Z. What did Mike Tyson say? Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor this week, uh, Midco. There's no time for downtime in our fast paced business world. So why settle for anything less than ultra smooth, ultra reliable business technology backed by a team of dedicated industry professionals. Midco business services are here to work around the clock with built in redundancy to provide the ultimate peace of mind while you run your business. Start with a free consultation to explore our adjustable service plans at midco.com slash business today. I've been a Midco user, you know, for the, probably the past two years now, and I've had no issues. Uh, really helps when I'm transferring all the files to uh, the cloud, people might say. Uh, so I've been a super happy with my experience with Midco. So if you guys are looking at getting some uh, premium internet service and the other services they have to offer, go to midco.com slash business today. All right, getting back into the questions a little bit now. So what are some... Actually, let's skip that one because I already talked about amenities. I was going to say, what are some amenities that are important to bring to your space? Kind of the bridal suite, the groom thing. Uh, so have you guys got any positive or negative feedback from clients or guests? You know, how did you use that feedback to better your business? We have, yes. We actually send a feedback form to our clients after the events because that's one of the things we say, like we mentioned, we're there at every single event, but unless we hear the feedback, good or bad, we don't know how to be better. And that's what we're always striving to do is make the next event better than the last one. So hearing that feedback is so crucial. Um, I guess knock on what a lot of our feedback has been really well, which again, as a business owner is very rewarding to hear when, I mean, I'm trying to think of our well, it's nice because I've been there obviously a couple times to film weddings and I've actually been to a couple weddings just as a guest. And I don't know. And I'm not trying to pump your guys' tires, but I don't know if there's ever been anything where I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like everything seems to go so well, like big parking lot. You know, there's a big uh, reception area. There's a big dance floor. All of it seems to to mesh really well. Minus that one time that I almost missed the first kiss when I was filming. <laughs> but, you know, that's besides, that's besides the point. Uh, that's why I don't film weddings anymore. I might get back into it. 2023. Uh, We always tell people like, if you hear something, let us know. Because again, mm -hmm. as any business owner would say, you want that feedback to know, like, how can we be better? Yeah. And you, especially, so do you guys like ask for Google reviews ever then? Cause I know Google reviews for some businesses work really well, but then if you know, if it's a shoddy business, sometimes you get some, you get some one stars some five stars. 
Yeah, we I guess we don't specifically ask for Google reviews. Every once in a while, we do have those Google okay. reviews that go up. I think everybody can read between most lines on Google reviews. Like yep. we've all read enough reviews, whether it's like, Are they okay, bullshitting? Yeah. this person's going to complain about anything or this person mm. is like, okay, they're genuine. This is something they need to work on or this is something they're doing great, that side of things. So um, yeah, we don't specifically ask for Google reviews, but we do in our feedback forms ask for maybe um, a testimonial that we can add to our website or things like okay. that. You could throw it on mine out whiners and complainers. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's, a good place. it's a good place to get feedback. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what does the day-to-day process look like then for you guys when you're not actually hosting an event? So I assume a lot of the events are Friday, Saturday. Yep. Oh, Especially weddings. in the summertime, yeah. the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, rehearsals are on Thursdays okay. usually. So, I mean, the day-to-day stuff, I mean, you know, you show up Monday and you're cleaning up from last weekend. Yep. You know, there's a lot of cleanup. And of course, every wedding's different. You yep. know, it seems like no two weddings are set up the same. So you're moving chairs, moving tables. Um, you know, summertime, there's grass to be mowed, trimming that needs to be done. Wintertime, there's sidewalks that need to be shoveled, snow removal. Okay. You know, those are all things that we do ourselves. Oh, there you go. Yep. Linens and that need to be washed. Yep. I mean, yeah, from linens to, like I said, a lot of cleanup and then setting up for the next week. So it okay. keeps us, it keeps us busy even on the days that we're not hosting events. And then of course, you know. She usually meets with all the people, but there's people that are scheduling tours because they're yeah. interested in booking, you okay. know, so even on well, the I days suppose, yeah. that we don't have events, there's people that are coming to tour the property and, and whatnot. So you have to have it looking, you know, presentable yeah. for, for that as well. I didn't even think about people doing tours. I just assumed, you know, oh, you see a picture online, let's go there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You have to do tours. Yeah. Are there are a lot of people that come and do tours and then just don't use that space. Or is well, it just kind of not too often? We have a lot of our information on our website. Okay. Um, pricing, availability, great FAQ section. So a lot of people can really vet the business and see if it works for them. Because we before they come before in. they come in. Okay. We want to make sure that our space works for them just as well as you know, like them coming in. They're gonna yep. enjoy everything that they get. Because again, it is most often the wedding that they're booking, and um, we want to make sure that we are the perfect fit. So. They can look at that a lot online ahead of time. So to answer your question, I guess fully, not often. Okay. Usually if they tour, um, they do end up booking again, not everybody by any means, but I would say a large percentage just because they know what they're getting into. They just want to come and truly see the space, walk through it themselves, kind of picture themselves there and answer the, the finer details. Do people book without seeing the space at all? Just say, boom, give me that date. I already know. Yep. Yep. Okay. And you know, we've been lucky enough that we are open for three years now. Word of mouth is huge, mm-hmm. um, but also, like you said, you've been out there for an event, you've seen it firsthand. You know, there that we love. I love when a person comes into tour and he's like, "Hey, I was at so and so's wedding." I'm like, yeah. perfect. You see firsthand. Yeah, you know how exactly we, how, it's how gonna... we run it. Okay. Um, so yeah, they wanted to get in the bridal suite and the groom suite and talk about you know the finer details, but for the most part, they saw the operation, and I think that's what makes me excited too, is because I'm like, "Hey, they were here. They love it. Yeah. This is great. So we're doing something right." No, that's pretty awesome. So then I want to actually I have one question. I thought of before this, if you have a wedding on a Friday and a Saturday and the rehearsal dinner is Thursday, can they both have rehearsal dinners Thursday or how does that work? Yes. Like if there's, do you do different ones? Like if there's one Friday and then there's a different one Saturday. Yeah. So with our Friday and Saturday events, you're guaranteed a, a one hour rehearsal time. Okay. So that's just to walk through the ceremony, kind of get the flow of traffic's more or less of what's going to happen. Okay. And then, um, so whether you book on a Friday or a Saturday, like I said, rehearsal is on Thursday and we have two time slots for that. Now at times people choose to book their rehearsal dinner out at the venue as well. And then of course we can only host one. It's a later time slot. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. So customer service wise, why do you think it's important in a business like yours? I assume there are things that come up with, uh, you know, the bride and groom were there asking for things or things come up. Why do you think the customer service is important just for the people that, you know, maybe they're just starting a business and they're wondering, you know, what's something they can take from this about customer service? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to like word of mouth, you know, especially in an area, you know, smaller community like this versus a big city. Um, if you don't have good customer service, you're going to struggle right off the bat, mm-hmm. you know, cause people talk, especially in a and time like more that. often they're going to talk about bad things versus good things. Bad, bad news spreads faster than good news. Correct. Is that what they said? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so having good customer service is very important to a new business, especially. 
So how your guys' brand then, when people think of the barn at 52 Pines, what's the brand you're trying to create? What do you want people to think of when they hear that? Excellence. You know, we pride ourselves in top-notch service. You know, okay. that's something that we always say, you know, to our guests or to potential clients is we try to offer a service that you're not going to get anywhere else. I mean, we are a full service. So you book with us. We have a full staff there from the time you get there in the morning at nine o'clock till the time they leave at one o'clock in the morning. And it's nice. The people that are coming there know that it's professionally ran and that things that should happen that you can expect are just going to happen. Cause if you're just to show up and be like, Oh, um, there's literally no one here. Mm-hmm. then it would start to maybe raise some flags. Yeah. And I think too, for us, um, just making sure, I guess, and all of our employees know this too, like just to kind of go that extra step. Okay. There's so many things that we don't, promise that we're going to do, but maybe we'll step up and do day of. And it really just go that extra step sometimes shows how much we truly care about each and every event. And again, it does come back to just customer service and yeah. that sort of thing, but just going the extra mile under promise over deliver, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. what they say mm-hmm. just full of quotes. Yep. Last <laughs> couple of podcasts. I've just been full of quotes, been reading so many books lately, yeah. you know, just that's going to be my new year's. I had a new year's resolution this year to read 18 books. I think I got seven. So, Hey, so we're gonna shoot for year. yeah. We're gonna shoot for uh, Try again. we're gonna yeah. shoot for eighteen again, twenty twenty three. Uh, so, what are some you mentioned? Word of mouth is obviously super important. But are there any marketing strategies that you guys have used that have worked better than others? I guess marketing side of things, we're maybe not the best ones to ask on that because we don't do a ton of marketing. We do the bridal shows. Um, we've been to ones here in Minot and then also down in the Bismarck area just to kind of get our name out throughout North Dakota. Okay. Again. Um, word of mouth, like we talked about is a huge side of the marketing for us because that goes further than anything. I mean, you're at an event and maybe you don't know anybody getting married, but you go talk to your coworker and they talk to a yeah. sister or a brother with things like that. Um, and then just Facebook, social media, things like that, where we post from each event and we've heard good feedback from our brides or bride and grooms, I guess, mm-hmm. couples where they can really picture themselves in the space, okay. whether it's used for this reason or that reason. And I guess marketing, that's really, we've always done. I mean, yeah. we've done some we radio, do we've done a few other things, but we don't do a ton of advertising. When especially that's, it's almost something that speaks for itself. You know, like yeah. if there's, if there's going to be a good product, it's going, the word's going to get out Yeah, because the venue, it sells itself. I mean, honestly, like the, even the pictures on your website, like the drone photo of, the barn and then there's the hills in the back or the view of looking towards Minot Burlington area. Like it almost sells itself in essence. Yeah. What do you guys, so you can each answer this. uh, What do you enjoy about the business process? What's your favorite part about the business process? Yeah, you go first. (laughs) Um, I guess this is, it's different for me than all the other businesses that I've been involved in. I guess what I enjoy about it is the, I'll call it the lack of headaches okay. more or less compared to some other businesses I've been in. Yep. Um, just cause it's a very upbeat environment, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, every event, um, you know, 99.9% of people are happy. Everyone's there to have a good time. Yep. And so it, it you know, it really makes the environment fun. Okay. You know, it, it's, it's a fun place to work. I think our staff would say the same thing. I mean, everyone kind of enjoys working there cause it's, you know, and that's so what I enjoy it. about it versus, you know, other business ventures that I've been on. Okay. Yeah. And I guess kind of in the same way, again, first time business owner with the Barna 52 Pines, but just the type of events that we have, it truly is. Everyone's different, which is really fun. And I enjoy that every weekend. It's somebody new, a new family coming in or whatever it may be, or throughout the week, you know, if we do the business events, meeting new businesses in town and just kind of connecting that way, it's always different. It's not the same repetitive you know, day-to-day operations. It's always something new and exciting. And yeah, that's, I think my favorite so, part of it. So we've talked a lot about weddings and there's, you guys also offer other or the space for <laughs> other events. And I know I was there last year for the take aim event with yep. uh, uh benchmark mortgage and I was filming that. So why do you think it's kind of cool that there's also that space where you can have weddings, but you can also go do something fun, like, you know, the take aim event, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and we kind of, thought about that when we were talking about this business plan is, you know, it's kind of geared towards wedding, but we also wanted to be available for corporate events. Cause I mean, let's be honest, our summer months, our weekends kind of fill themselves. Yeah. I mean, we don't have many Friday and Saturdays from, Mm -hmm. 
you know, May and June through October that are available. Yeah. But it's always nice to fill some middle of the week stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's usually going to be like corporate events or training seminars, you know, something of that nature. This time of the year, Christmas parties. Okay. Yeah. I guess I didn't think, you know, I mean, anything that you, you know, you need a a big space to gather a bunch of people. um, We can accommodate that. And so that was important to us to, to fill other dates other than just weekends. Yeah. Which is cool. That has that versatility. Mm -hmm. Uh, how are you guys looking to grow the business day after day? You know, what are you doing? What do, what do you, where do you want it to get to? Obviously it's doing well for itself right now, but is there like a end goal and North star? What are you shooting for? I wouldn't really say there's so much of an end goal necessarily. Um, I think it goes, yeah, it's a hard one to answer. I guess, sorry to interrupt there, but sorry, uh, hard to answer in a way of, you know, you would have asked us five years ago where we'd be today and it probably wouldn't be owning this business. Yeah. So looking five years ahead, um, maybe not necessarily change or growth as far as like growing the business or changing the business a whole lot, but just keeping up with, again, just back to the wedding side of things. The wedding industry is fast paced. It's changing. We got to keep up with the most current trends and what people are wanting. Mm -hmm. So just being adaptable and being willing to change based on what's needed that way. Did you ever think about maybe getting another space? You got the barn over here, then maybe you got... We've, we've joked about it. We okay, usually, but. we usually this time of year, we always joke that we're going to build the barn at 52 Palms and be somewhere a lot more <laughs> okay. just because, you know, when we're out shoveling snow, but yeah, it's, it's something we yeah. joke about, but I guess this, this whole business started as kind of a joke to begin with. So yeah. you just, you don't know you where, know we, what's where, coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, three years, five years down the road, it could be, you know, yeah. t- totally different than we're, what we're thinking right Maybe now. Maybe 15 yeah. years down the road, you guys have this big event conglomerate where every, st- <laughs> every state you got something 52 yes, palms, right. Alaska, you got 52 something bears or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so last question I got for you guys, each of you has to give me four Mount Rushmore of business advice to the youngins that are maybe just graduating or someone just started a business. Uh, four piece of advice. I don't know if you guys want to go four, four, one, 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 Let's whatever you want to do. Like two and two. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that too. Um, you know, I'd say for someone that's looking to start their own business, uh, I guess one of the, one thing that comes to mind is, you know, a lot of people can come up with an idea or mm-hmm. a vision or a dream, um, but you got to make it happen. You know, I mean, you, thinking about it is one thing, but don't be afraid to, you know, I think a lot of people are just too hesitant. Yeah. They think about it and they talk about it and they might even start planning it, but taking that first step. Masters of idea. Correct. That's what I call it. You know, and uh, (laughs) so that, that would definitely be something I would say. I mean, you gotta, you know, thinking about it only gets you so far. You gotta do something. Let's do, let's actually do two and two because last time I did this with two guests, Mm -hmm. they were just taking each other's answers. (laughs) So we'll do you one. Now we'll go to you and then we'll go back. Okay. Well, not taking his answer, but playing off of it, maybe like, you got to work hard. You have to be willing to work hard. And I think where I'm going with that is we talked a little bit about it earlier, but people think owning a business is easy and you have to be willing to put in the work and the time and nobody else is going to do it for you. Like he kind of said, so you just have Mm -hmm. to have that mindset of I'm willing to put in as many hours as it takes to make it to be successful. Yeah. It's, And I think one thing we talked about in the last episode is that the things that you focus and obsess on are more than likely to come true if you just work at it. Mm -hmm. Like even if, you know, maybe you had no idea how to swing a hammer. Well, if you practice every day for 10 hours to swing that hammer, you'd figure out how to hit a nail, I would assume. (laughs) All right. One more piece of advice from each of you and then uh, we'll let these people go. Um, Persistence, I would say. If you're not a persistent type of personality, um, try to become one. Because, you know, in starting your own business, you're going to run into roadblocks yep. and it's very easy to, you know, hit that first roadblock and be like, you know, this isn't worth it. This is too much work. You yep. know, um, you got to be persistent. You know, no, no, starting a new business is never going to be easy. There's going to be roadblocks, never. but you got to, you know, fight through that one. Another one's going to pop up, fight through that one. Um, so I'd say, you know, being persistent and working through those issues. And, and it's not a straight line. Correct. No, it's, it's, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. Which is, uh-huh. it's exciting. Sometimes it it's is. stressful. There's ups and there's downs. And I feel like but. that's what he's helped me on the <clears throat> business route. Maybe him being a business owner before is that persistent. Like yeah. it is easy to just like, okay, this is not going to work. Like let's not even, mm-hmm. and then you just got to keep going. It's like, yeah, today sucks, but tomorrow might suck less. Yes, yep. absolutely. Okay. Um, one my last one, I guess, 
I don't know, kind of sounds dumb and cliche, but like just treat others the way you want to be treated. Like as a business owner, like we teach, we learn that from when we're little, right? Yeah. But I just being in the business owner world and maybe it's just the event venue side of like so many different types of people coming in. Like yeah. there's a couple that I don't think I know. And then all of a sudden I know five, 10 people at this wedding. And I think, what if I didn't treat them right one day? Yeah. You know, so I think just work hard, treat the others that you wait the way you want to be treated. And in the end, it's all going to come full circle. And yeah. Boom. There's four. Where can people find you? What, uh, what do you want me to link below websites, social yeah. media? Uh, 52pines.com is our website. And like I mentioned earlier, has a lot of great information as far as pricing, availability, things like that. And then reach out via email. Our emails listed on the website and that's the best form of communication for us. Sweet. Awesome. And if you guys haven't been to a wedding there, try to wedding crash. I don't know. <laughs> Go check it out. It's fun. I've been to a lot and usually I'm needing a ride home after yeah. I'm at yeah. the wedding. So thank you guys very much yes. for coming thank on the you. show. Thank you. That was episode 35 of the Mind of Business podcast. We will see you guys next week for episode 36. Thank you.